Like a healthy worm, nice and shiny and This is my first video with this worm bin on. It's my small worm bin. I wrote on the, the lid here that I started it November 3rd, 2023. So this is about 20, 21 days ago, it looks like. This is my mini worm bin. I have it right now. I just have it set down inside my urban worm bag and those worms. So my daughter and I counted out 500 red wigglers from my other, from my urban worm bag, transferred them to this one and, uh, Let's take a look and see how they're doing. I just saw one hide away over there. He was starting to feed on this. These are chicken feed pellets is what they are. I've seen other videos where people use them and the worms seem to love them. So I tried it and man, sure enough, they love them. They go right for them. This was a melon of some sort. I can't remember the name. It looks like they've done good work with that. That's been in there for about... I'd say 15 days because I didn't do it right when I started the bin. It's nothing but paper skin now, practically. Still have a good amount of bedding, but I'm glad to see some worms actively feeding. So I'm going to kind of dig things up a little bit just to see where we're at with some of my previous feedings. Some potato peels from two weeks ago. It's a little bit dry in here. I'm probably going to need to add some moisture. You might notice that I did not cut any vent holes in this Tupperware. This is the size I wanted, so I went for it. But it is not a good fitting lid. I couldn't find any opaque bins either. I could only find these transparent ones. So here I am working with this, and I didn't need to cut holes or put any screen on. Since I have it downstairs in my basement, I don't have to worry about Fungus, or excuse me, fungus gnats. I might have to worry about fungus gnats, but not at this point. It's a little too dry for that. But I might have to worry about fruit flies. I've had problems with that with other bins before. I think it makes the rest of my house and family members unhappy. All right, seeing some worms, but I'm not surprised. With only putting 50 worms in here, there's not going to be a huge population explosion quite yet. And since they've only been here a month, they're still getting used to surroundings, I bet. And perhaps haven't done much breeding to this point. I'm sure I threw some cocoons in there as well when I transferred because I, in order to help inoculate this bin when I was getting the worms out of the urban worm bag, I also took quite a few castings. I just saw a cocoon there and then dirt fell on it and buried it. I don't see it anymore. I'll keep my eyes open. I'd love to show you a cocoon here if I can. Next time I see one, I'll start a quick video and add it to this clip or add the clip to this if I can. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing some worms here and the worms I'm seeing have good color. Let's see if I can grab that one. They look healthy. He's a little bit younger. You can tell he's not full size yet. Looks like a healthy worm, nice and shiny and so yeah, I think they're happy in their new bin. Again, I'm going to add a little bit of moisture. Now the time to do a little bit of the feeding. Since there's not very many worms in here, it's not going to be a very big feeding. This avocado could probably be more than enough for them. I like to put a little bit of dirt in there before I turn it over. Oops, I forgot. Like I forgot to get the sticker off that one. I can't do it with my gloves. So next, the, the sticker won't get eaten and I'll find it eventually. And just pick it out when we get there. I'm going to go ahead and add some, a little bit of bedding. I like to add bedding, even though you can see bedding in there clearly. I'm still going to add some, help soak up some of the juices from the stuff I put in there. And it's difficult to have too much bedding, so. Here's some char that I'm going to put in there. That once it's inoculated with the bacteria from this bin, from the worm and their castings, the worms in their castings. It'll eventually become biochar. Collection of stuff over here. This time I'm gonna put in some lentils. I did some research in um, some of the protein 
that is provided from having pulverized lentils can be helpful for their breeding and for their cocoon laying and for their overall growth. They really seem to like them too. Sometimes I'll put them right on the surface and they go right for them. You'll see them the next day. It reminds me I forgot in my previous video to show what happens when I put eggshells on the surface. And eggshells. And I put some of the grains on the surface. And I add some corn and strawberries. These have been in the freezer because it helps break down the cell walls and that's why they're so soggy. But it helps them break down and turn into worm food faster, which turns into turns into worm castings faster, and that's the whole point of this. And some eggshells. Eggshells they use for grit so they can help grind their food up in their gizzard. And it also adds some calcium and other nutrients and stuff to the garden once you put the castings out there. And a little bit of rabbit manure from my neighbor who raises rabbits. And I'm going to give this a little bit of a spray down. Since things were a little bit dry overall. You never want to go too wet. I've had that problem and it's harder to fix the problem when it's too wet than it is to fix a problem when it's a little too dry. I'll go ahead and bury this. Get paper from that melon, whatever it was. A little bit of a mound where I buried the food, that's okay, it'll sink back down. Do a little bit more of a spray, it still feels dry in there. Probably from bird seeds or maybe one of the melons I threw in here, different seeds that come from different fruit. All right, and then finally, I'm gonna show you guys what happens when I put a pile of eggshell next to a pile of bird seed. Next to a small pile of chicken feed. I've learned that chicken feed needs to be at least moist because it doesn't break down very much at all when it's totally dry like this. The worms kind of leave it alone. So I get it pretty wet and I'll probably even come back and check on it in 10 minutes or so. It expands big time. I don't know if you've ever seen alfalfa pellets or wood smoker pellets. They, when they get wet, they totally puff up and expand, kind of like styrofoam peanut things. Time to do a quick update on this mini worm bin that I've got. I did put a pile of bird seed right here. You can see a little bit of the remnants there. And some of the chicken feed, but that looked like it got moldy. It's okay in this type of worm bin. The mold and the fungi and stuff, the worms will take care of that. Not too many signs of worms in this bin. I'd have to dig down before we see them. See where they're at here. Going on a worm hunt, it looks like. There's some. Looks nice and healthy. Just a reminder, I started off with 50 worms is all in this bin. I'm trying to see how many I can get to just grow and breed in here. I haven't seen any cocoons in this bin yet, but it... Um, have the date written on the bin right here, started it 11-3, so just one month ago is when I started it. Today's the 4th of December. There's some healthy ones, and you see that swollen part on that worm right there. That's signs of a mature, where'd it go? Yeah, signs of a mature worm that's able to reproduce. And hopefully we can start seeing some baby worms in here soon. After about a month, it takes them a few weeks to get settled in when they get put in a new bin. But I think I need some more regular food in here, not bedding food. So I'm gonna go get some more stuff buying on the counter. Probably some avocado or something, one of their favorite foods.
some strawberries maybe. Feels like I have an avocado right here. Yep, there is an avocado. I've forgotten about that. There are some worms dining on that. That's a good sign. But I'm gonna go ahead and get some more. Probably some more of that pumpkin from carving our pumpkins. Put that in here. And then uh, I've disturbed these worms enough, fluffed it up here. You can see the amount of bedding that's in here is about normal where I like to keep it. I keep leaving those stickers on. It's okay, eventually that'll be the only thing that's left is a sticker and I can pull it out then. But I'll go get some normal food and I've got my helper here today. I'll grab that side. We're going to lift the lid up and turn over so that pill bug falls in there. All right, you can see where I put the eggshell and the bird seed. The eggshell is completely gone. So that surprises me. I've seen them really go nuts over the bird seed plenty of times in the past, but apparently right now eggshell is the thing to do. So we can check it under that avocado, see if there's much of a worm ball. I see a few mites on the surface there. I don't know if you can quite see that. Yeah, they're moving around. You see one? Okay, not much of a worm ball. The worms are there, but all right, we're just gonna have to check back. I threw some pieces of cantaloupe and watermelon in here too yesterday, so I'm not gonna check on those yet. I'll give those another day, and then I'll show you those. Hopefully, we can get these worms to start reproducing in here. Right as I said that, I just saw a nice cocoon right there in the center of the screen. So they are reproducing in this bin, which is fantastic. I've been worried because it doesn't seem like they're multiplying very fast. But it hasn't been too terribly long since I started this bin. And hopefully they're getting used to it by now. And going to be growing. My hopes are to have more worms than I know what to do with so I can start giving them to friends and other things like that. But wanted to give an update on this mini worm bin. It is now December 16th. And I, last time I had showed this avocado in here, there is a cocoon somewhere in this area. I don't see it this time. Things get mixed up as the worms move around and do their thing. But I also wanted to check after the video or since the video um, that I did last, I added some watermelon and some cantaloupe little chunks. And I wanted to see if there's a little bit more of a worm ball in here under this avocado. So I'm gonna first check this avocado. Hopefully there's lots of worms. Yep, there we go. We're starting to see some worm activity in there. You guys can come around here and see. The worms like to hide up inside the avocados like that. <laughs> so I'm gonna dig down here carefully, see if I have any sign of the melons that I put in. Melons typically don't last very long because they're a sweeter food. The worms really seem to like them. Yeah, but I had some pumpkin in here as well. Slices of pumpkin from when we did our pumpkin carving. So. Of course, as I expected, I have no sign of any of the melon, which means there's plenty of worms in here eating it, which is good. I think I mentioned in my last video, I'm nervous that they weren't reproducing or thriving in this bin yet, but I was happy to see that cocoon and I'm happy to see that the food is disappearing. It'll probably be the last update for this bin for a little while.